Hi, I'm Cassandra Seckler, director at Dreams for Dead Cats Productions, and right now we're in pre-production for our next film, Tearful Surrender, which features lots of tentacles. So, since I have to make so many of them right now, I figured I'd put together this tutorial on how to make tentacles while on a budget. You'll want to start with forming the base of the tentacle. Think about how long you want it and details of the creature you are making before proceeding. How much movement do you want there to be? Is it merely decorative? This will affect your decisions. Be creative. Got any foil or plastic wrap? These materials work great as well for forming an armature. Like always, I say be creative and use what you've got. I'm using some cardboard pieces and masking tape. Begin with creating the tip for the tentacle. Keep it tapered. Widen it as it goes down. Use some trash bags stuffed with paper to help create a form. Keep that tape nice and tight while wrapping your tentacle form. As I wrap the tape around, I'm picturing in my mind eels, snakes, and other wild sea creatures. Once you have it the desired length, stop. It's time to paper mache and add texture. Mix your glue concoction, whether it's flour and water or glue and water, and start wetting the paper. I love using cotton and toilet paper for I feel they help create great malleable skin textures. I recommend prepping your cotton and toilet paper pieces in advance to save you time and trouble while working on your prop. Add as many layers as you feel necessary to make for a smooth base. About three layers worked for me. Once you have a nice base to work with, start adding the suction cups. You don't have to be literal with an octopus-like creature, but think about a type of texture you might like to add to make your prop unique. I'm going with creating circular alternating patterns for an underside of the tentacle. You can sculpt areas using the latex and toilet paper or cotton to define areas that you want to build up and give a specific shape to. The more detailed the suction cups, the more exaggerated and deep they will need to be. Tip. To prep the cotton balls, simply stick your finger through the center and pull the protruding end out. Keep pulling gently until it unravels completely. This will give you a nice long piece to work with that is more manageable than a ball of cotton. Twist some of the toilet paper and strands to save time with creating rings for the suction cups. Gently apply the cotton and pull it in desired directions for gnarly effects. You can wrap pieces around your fingers if you want circular pieces to work with. The more drenched with glue, the more malleable. Go nuts, get messy, and have fun. Time to break out the latex. Begin by applying a release agent liberally to the base. This will help greatly when removing the latex and avoid it from sticking to the armature. Once well coated, Begin painting even layers of latex to the tentacles. Make sure to let the layers dry between applications. A blow dryer will help speed up the drying process between layers. I found that about three rounds of latexing is sufficient. Allow to fully dry before moving forward. Now it's time to remove the tentacle from the base. This is where the baby powder comes in handy. Keep your hands dry and clean. Add powder when peeling it off the release as the Vaseline gets quite sticky. Be patient and know that if it tears at all, that it's an easy fix. Just mend it after it's stuffed. Once fully removed, clean as necessary and prepare to stuff the tentacle. I want mine to have a little bit of wiggle, but retain a nice fat shape. 
So I'm using exercise tubing combined with some polyfill to give it some shape. String the tubing through the tentacle all the way down to the end. Cut the tip and pull the tubing through and secure the end so it stays tight while you are stuffing the tentacle. Some rubber bands come in handy here. Begin gently stuffing the tentacle to give it some form. Use a stick or pole to jam the stuffing down. Whether it be a broom, a dowel rod, or a ruler, anything will do as long as it's narrow enough to pass through the form as deeply as possible without ripping it. Use your hands. Squeeze and shimmy the stuffing down firmly yet gently with a little tickle, squeeze, and pull motion. Once you get the stuffing as far down as possible, you can finesse the tip by inserting a bit more cotton at the tip before mending it. Mend the tip with more toilet paper and latex. Add any other extra texture to the tentacle before moving forward. Allow to dry before painting. Acrylic paints will do just fine. Colors will vary based on desired effect and type of monster you are creating. I want mine to be surreal and otherworldly. I'm using some crimson red, magenta, yellow, purple, and black, mainly for the base, mixed with a medium. Tip. When choosing your paints, keep the lighting scheme you'll be using in mind. You may even want to paint with a lighting scheme set up to achieve the desired effect. Add final detail and texture with the paint. I will be using Congo and Zenith blue gels and know that the glow paints make for an exciting and inexpensive effect, making the neon paints I have really pop. You may want to consider using a fixative or sealant to keep your prop in good condition. This is optional. This is always the scariest and most fun part, testing your prop. Does it work how you want it to? The great thing is, even if it's not exactly what you expected, you learn from it, and that is the beauty and excitement with DIY prop making. Today, I can say that I'm happy with the results and can't wait to keep making more tentacles. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and feel inspired to get out there and make your own tentacles. Now, I just showed you one way of making tentacles. There are so many different methods out there, so I encourage you to get out there, experiment, be creative, and start making tentacles and other wonderful things.